And um, next, I'd like to introduce Reed Getz with Hillwood to come give the industrial update. A read. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Um, <clears throat> I know that we're running just a little bit long, so I'm going to move quickly through this presentation because I don't want to make the next discussion uh, any longer than it needs to be. Um, and you really don't want to be late when your boss is one of those two next speakers. So, um, Reed Getz with Hillwood. Uh, I've been with uh, Hillwood Working at Alliance for over 17 years. And just a little plug about Hillwood, we're a 30 uh, plus year old, fully vertically integrated global real estate development company founded by Ross Pro Jr. And over that time throughout the world, we've developed over 250 million square feet, uh, multi-asset, but really class A industrial is our fastball. And what uh, I'm particularly most proud of as a, as a native Fort Worth resident, um, that all started here in Fort Worth at Alliance, Texas, which 27,000 acres in total that we have developed over 55 million square feet. And so what we've been able to accomplish here within um, Texas and within Fort Worth and DFW has been um, you know, pretty remarkable and it's been a team effort. It's, you look back as to, as to when Alliance started, it was all ranch land, farmland, and a bold vision uh, and true public-private partnership that I think as you listen to all the speakers today is tr the true recipe for success. And as we continue to have success here in, in DFW and in Fort Worth, we need to remind ourselves and, 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 and stay true to what, we're, what we've been working on and see what happens in other areas and cities that are losing population as we're growing it. So as we look forward in terms of how we build out this community, um, we, you know, we gotta keep thing, those things in mind, both public and private. Um, so we'll get started. Um, a couple of trends in the industrial sector, which has been incredibly um, remarkable run over the past 10 years, particularly two years, there's some big picture trends that, that have really come into this that started um, you know, in the late, late uh, 2000s. The adoption of e-commerce and the growth of e-commerce sales as it relates to retail sales over you know, several decades, warehouse was big bulk, product comes in, gets broken down, gets sent out to retail stores. Well, all of that has been changing with the way that, it, that we all expect our goods, with, with the way that we demand, you know, next this week three day two day delivery that didn't come easy you got to completely rebuild and revamp the entire supply chain um, and with that drives a lot of innovation investment so not only physical real estate um, but also uh, growth and capacity and in, in square footage we've also had some themes uh, as we've most recently experienced over the past couple of years because of pandemic and and obviously the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, corporate America leaders have, have realized that the model of globalization, just-in-time real estate, which is theoretically efficient and cost-effective, is, is extremely risky. And so we've seen a trend of, of reshoring and manufacturing growth come back into industrial. And so all of those things that have been happening over the past 10 to 15 years have really condensed in the past uh, four to five, and we'll see that here in the numbers. What's really remarkable, though, is that DFW as a region has had a front row seat to this when you look at it compared to the nation. Um, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, is the second largest industrial market in the country. Eight years ago, we were fifth. Second to Chicago, which is 1.3 billion. We, we, we crossed a billion square feet last year. We do have some of the highest construction numbers. Um, we do have land availability, 360 degree growth, uh, and a lot of um, very entrepreneurial developers that have been fueled with some very cheap capital. Uh, so we, we've got very elevated construction numbers, but we've had that over the past 10 years. We're typically number one in the country. Uh, net absorption, number one in the country, over 35 million, down from 40 million last year, but last year, uh, uh, two years ago, but 40 million was essentially double what our historical norms have been. And then vacancy rates, you know, surprisingly, uh, still very healthy when you think about all this growth and demand, but, uh, I mean, growth in construction, but what's happened is construction durations have 
have, we heard about in construction have gone from back in the good old days, you know, 12 months total from design, plat, permit, build, to upwards of 18 to 24 months in some cases. So extended timelines have, have driven that out but kept some of those vacancy rates down. Um, this is net absorption, net deliveries over the past uh, 11 years, and you can see, again, for the DFW industrial market, net absorption in blue and net deliveries uh, in, in the uh, orange there. This is our 49th consecutive quarter of positive uh, net absorption. So very, very healthy. Uh, it vacancy rate at 5.3%, near, near record low. Um, what we're starting to see is a little bit of supply uh, start to grow here, but again, very, very healthy kind of looking backwards. As you see what, what's happened in e-commerce sales is a, is a metric that we, that we track. Obviously in the pandemic here, it was exponential growth, kind of quarter, of quarter over quarter growth. We've always been, we've been watching to see how does that level out? Does that come back down? Or, or how sticky are these trends? Well, uh, it's been very uh, positive, healthy growth of over 10% in this last quarter. Uh, so e-commerce is, is very much going to be a trend that we see continue to grow in the future. As you look at re, uh, percentage of retail, total retail sales today, it's about 15%. And according to uh, uh, a lot of the big published firms of CBRE and even you know, Morgan Stanley put some numbers out, by 2025 there's an expectation that that goes into uh, you know, 22, 23%. And for every for every billion dollars of, of, of e-commerce sales, that equates to about a million, 1.2 million square feet of industrial space need. So a lot of secular trends that are gonna be strong demand drivers. Uh, with that, we've seen record rent growth here in DFW. There was, for, for 30, 40 years, you could bet on two to 3% rent growth. Um, this has caught, I think, our, our our industry uh, by surprise over the past couple of years. And honestly, I think that that number is probably a little bit understated. We've seen on new space, uh, even upwards of 20%. If you're renewing, if you're an existing asset owner and you're renewing rents, uh, leases that were signed five plus years ago, you're probably getting 30 to 40% kind of rent increases. Um, all of that due to limited supply, uh, pretty insatiable demand, we've had, we've had uh, several experiences over the past year to where multiple tenants, four to five, uh, at one time looking at the same space. And for the first time in my career, having to kind of re reset, readjust uh, rental rates on a, on a you know, every two week kind of basis. Things again that, that we've never experienced before um, as owners of industrial real estate. Some of the big signals that you start to see, okay, looking ahead, where could some problems be outside of a potential you know, slowing of the economy and a potential demand slow uh, is under construction. You know, again, this is, a, this is very capital uh, fueled, institutional capital did um, uh, increase allocations to industrial real estate over the past five years, a focus on DFW, and with that has fueled a significant amount of, of construction you can see here in 2022, 85 million square feet under construction, which stunning that we have that much land. I mean, that's 5,500 acres when you really, when you do the, uh, the, the high level math. Our average for the past 11 years is 32 million square feet. That 85 is about 22% pre-lease, so it's not like it's all vacant space. And when you really look at the breakdown of what sizes, which I think is really important in our business. You know, a million square foot user is not gonna be looking for the same kind of space as a 50,000 square foot user. It's very top and bottom heavy in terms of, of uh, supply uh, that, that will deliver over next year. Um, the million square foot space is about 25% of that. There was about seven million square foot leases uh, in DFW last year and same the year before. This is your big e-commerce fulfillment users that need to be by um, critical supply chain um, uh, uh, sectors. Probably a little bit um, overbuilt in that area in the fringe markets that, that maybe shouldn't have necessarily been 
uh, developed uh, just due to, again, capital availability, but we'll see. Uh, and then on that smaller side, which when you think about the 350,000 square feet and, and lower, it only takes about 20, 22 acres and smaller investment size. So um, we'll see how that uh, kind of plays out over this next year. From a cap rate standpoint, uh, Drew got into a lot of that, a lot of parallels with, uh, with multifamily. It has been running very hot um, through kind of the course of the beginning of last year. You know, we, we, we've seen trades that really hit market lows in the first quarter of last year of low 3% cap rates. And as, as the 10-year Treasury started to move up and, and, the, and the Fed funds rate, there was a compression of spreads that got down into the 80, 80 basis points. Not really as tight as, as multifamily, but close. Historical trends are you know, about 300 basis points. That's over a 17-year period. I think that could settle in in the, in the you know, mid-200s. Uh, but you can see that, that at the end of the year when there was a trade um, kind of mid, mid fives, and these are on average in aggregate, that spread had already kind of gone back to 200 basis points. And that's a, at a 5-3 or a 3-5 uh, tenure, so, which has already lost about you know, 20 basis points as of today. So if we think that could settle in uh, pretty closely to kind of Fed fives, depending on what happens uh, with, with interest rates moving forward, I do think that you know, given the fact that there were trades toward the end of the year uh, when markets were very disrupted, shows the conviction uh, that institutional capital has towards uh, industrial real estate. So we're gonna go through quickly um, some of the local markets here. So greater Tarrant County industrial market is a significant portion of the overall uh, DFW marketplace. What is think, something to note here is that we had a higher uh, net absorption than the rest of the market um, compared to the product that we're delivering. So we're in a healthy balance, uh, especially in a, in a vacancy rate standpoint. So we'll start up at Alliance, Texas, which is one of the um, most appealing from a supply chain amenity standpoint, intermodal rail, uh, air cargo, modern highway, and it has really been the kind of big deal market for, um, uh, for Fort Worth. It's now the largest uh, submarket in all of DFW, which again, kind of growing from, from, uh, from ranch land 30 years ago into the most significant submarket is a, is a testament to um, just the value that, that a place like Fort Worth and and, uh, and vision and, and kind of bold decisions early on can, can help create. Uh, under construction, we are second in the market. So a lot of other uh, developers uh, have, have, have caught on to those, to those benefits. And then net absorption, uh, number two. So still very, very healthy in terms of growth. We'll go quickly through a few of these. Um, so Hillwood, as we, we get into some of the specific buildings, we launched our largest spec building in the history of Alliance in, uh, in 2021. And as we completed it, we were able to lease that to, to Target uh, for their new fulfillment center. And as a 1.2 million square foot building, uh, it does bring on different kind of design uh, specs that you'd see in a, in a, in a, in a smaller building, 40 foot clear um, truck courts, that have expandability, uh, so you can do a third truck court to the north. Um, heavy, heavy employee car parking, likely uh, um, heavy uh, conveyor fulfillment type investment here. Uh, innovation and automation is a big piece of, of how these fulfillment centers operate. Uh, so that's a, that's a big win. And with that, we launched a million square foot uh, spec development right next to the BNSF Intermodal with Westport 25. We also leased a 493,000 square foot uh, Alliance Center North 9 spec building to Carolina Beverage, which is a, a high-speed bottling company that is, their, this is their second facility that they are growing into here in Alliance. As kind of a, a, a view on, on reshoring and, and growth in manufacturing, we saw a couple of manufacturing deals in Alliance, uh, one of which was uh, Beauty Manufacturing Solutions, which acquired Alliance Gateway 2, which was the former uh, Nokia North American manufacturing headquarters that was built in the 90s. So repurposing a facility and they will be the manufacturing um, uh, beauty and consumer products uh, here in Alliance. 
Another manufacturing deal that we announced and broke ground on in 2022 is MP Materials. So rare earth uh, mining and rare earth um, uh, minerals is a, uh, are, are critical in going into um, magnets and, and, and semiconductors and really kind of the, the future technology of the world. You think about uh, electronic vehicle batteries. Uh, China owns a significant portion of that around the world. MP Materials owns a California um, uh, mine and resource. And what we're doing here is we're building their magnet manufacturing plant. And these magnets will go into um, uh, batteries for electronic, uh, uh, for electric vehicles. And they've got a partnership with GM. So very, very significant project there from a manufacturing standpoint. Going over to uh, the west side of Alliance, Northport. Uh, at least 2.4 million square feet in three deals. So ITS and Dollar General, 2 million square foot deals, and Spearpoint, a 400,000 square foot deal leased in their 800,000 square foot uh, spec building. And DHL leased their 1.2 self-built um, uh, building up in the uh, north side of Alliance. So big deals in Alliance continues. As we move down to Mercantile, Railhead and Fossil Creek, you know, at the um, uh, crossing of, of I-35 and 820, great labor, strong logistics, um, limited in terms of, of availability, which kind of held back some of their, I think, absorption, uh, but still number five in DFW market. They're delivering uh, several new projects here that will increase that supply uh, with Cowtown Crossing uh, delivering their, their one million three, three building uh, development on 287. Meacham Commerce Center completed in this past year and leased their building to TTI and right next to it, uh, West Side 35, which is developed by Crow Holdings, leased their entire project and then sold that uh, to CBREIM at the end of the year, so a, a trade at the end of the year. Just south of that, Blazing uh, Trail Logistics Center with, with Lincoln Properties, two building development on the west side of 35 and then just moving over to the east side, uh, is a two building, uh, 718,000 square foot development by MCW, uh, Mark Goldman. And this is a, a, a growing trend that we could see moving forward. This land is actually ground leased. And so as, as infill property development continues to occur, like we've seen in some of the larger uh, coastal markets, I think that we could see this become more of a trend uh, for, for those right infill sites throughout DFW. So moving over to West Fort Worth, which is a, a growing market, uh, hadn't had a lot of development over the, over the past several decades, but we're seeing a lot happen now that follow population trends and that work along that, eight, that 820 um, uh, corridor to the west. With really four big projects to, to note, the first one being LGE Design launching their uh, three building, uh, 531,000 square foot development as spec, which we'll complete later this year. And Lone Star Commerce Center, which you may have read about, uh, the GKN uh, aerospace menu, uh, uh, group that City of Fort Worth helped bring uh, into this building here on the left, 100,000 100, square foot on the, on the front. They're a research and development uh, company in the aerospace industry. So that building is, uh, that, that project is 100% leased. Moving out to the west, which is the biggest development project that West Fort Worth has seen to date, Majestic, in, in partnership with Hickman, uh, launched their 1.1 million square foot building uh, as spec, and that will complete towards the end of the year. And then working your way down to the southwest, which is an area that, again, really hasn't seen much development, but, but significant population growth. Uh, Jackson Shaw, right on uh, Winscott and and, uh, and I-20 I launched a, uh, a four building, 917,000 square foot development, size ranging of 80,000 square feet up to uh, 375. So really eager to see their performance. Uh, and again, market has been pretty underserved from a supply standpoint. So moving to South Fort Worth, which has gone through its own kind of um, you know, renaissance in terms of, of development and leasing activity. 
It has done some of the biggest deals in, in uh, Tarrant County outside of Alliance this year. Right on I-35 with, with, with good access to I-20 and a, and a really strong labor, labor pool. Carter Park East, which is a partnership, uh, old Amy Carter Foundation owned land with Rob Reiner and, and uh, Clarion and Crow. Uh, they completed their 500 and 300,000 square foot spec buildings, leased the 300 to Justin Boots, which relocated their distribution operations from outside of the city into Fort Worth, so great to have them back. And then launched three buildings there along the, uh, uh, the bottom part of the page, 190, two 193s and 170s. In the foreground, you can see the home goods, million square foot deal that they signed in 2021, but that's, that's nearing completion now. And they can do another million square foot between those two buildings. Just to the south of there, Lone Star Commerce Center, uh, owned by MDH Partners, which was acquired uh, from Bandera, who who'd built those two buildings this spec, leased to GXO with 644,000 a square foot lease, which GXO, uh, a break off of, of XPO, which is at one time before they split, one of the largest 3PLs in the world. And over on the west side of 35, um, Van Trust completing their, their north building of 670,000 square feet and leased that to Samsung, which is the biggest deal in South Fort Worth last year and near completion on their 600,000 square foot spec just to the south of there. So again, product that we hadn't seen of this size in South Fort Worth being delivered and absorbing and really proving up that market. Another deal that happened that we don't necessarily have a photo on was in East Fort Worth uh, to Libby Glass, which is a 600,000 square foot building built as spec uh, by Granite Forefront, um, and that did sign this past year. So going back and looking at last year's predictions, um, predicted that four one million square foot deals would be signed in Fort Worth. Uh, that was I was able to get that one right with with Target and Dollar General and ITS um, and uh, DHL. DFW absorption uh, remains over 35 million square feet. Pretty close there, about about 35.4 million square feet. So we got close. Um, DFW vacancy rate exceeds six and a half percent. That didn't happen. Uh, a lot of the product that was under construction didn't deliver due to um, uh, supply chain challenges and just longer lead times. So we were, were stay below there at, uh, at 5.3. And then, as I mentioned last year of, of stepping out of my bounds and trying to uh, predict interest rates, I was, uh, I was upside down on this one by like April. Um, one can only wish and hope. And then on Republicans taking the Senate and House, I, I got that about half right. So moving forward, I'm gonna completely stay away from both interest rates and politics. Um, looking ahead to 2023, so DFW construction starts decreased by 50%. I think that given the fact of all the things that you heard kind of leading up to um, uh, uh, here, financing became really challenging towards the end of the year. Construction loans really challenging to get. And that essentially is going to shut down uh, development for the first uh, one to two quarters of this year. Not necessarily because of lack of, of strong fundamentals, um, but because it's hard to finance. And so that's going to significantly impact our, our uh, construction starts. DFW absorption, I think, remains above 25 million square feet, which is our historical 10-year av average. It's not 35, it's not 40, but it's still a very healthy number. And I think the only reason that that's going to happen is because of some of this uncertainty that is gonna happen over the next six months uh, of companies potentially delaying decisions, but overall, again, still very healthy. I think the rent growth is gonna continue over 10%, uh, largely driven by um, uh, you know, infill rent growth that's gonna to continue to, to accelerate. We might see some uh, decrease in some of the kind of the tertiary markets if there's multiple options and, and oversupply, but I still think it's gonna be a healthy rent growth. And then I do think that based on um, what's going to happen in terms of deliveries, that we're going to see an, uh, uh, an acceleration in that 6.5% of vacancy. And then last prediction, and, and you know, as the first away game playoff 
when since 1992 that I've got visions of Aikman, Emmett, Michael Irvin, days of being Cowboys, I'm going to predict that the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. So, thank you. And